There was a lot of negative programming. You know, I'll never forget my dad when I, you know, I was like 13. He said, hey, you're going to end up in prison. Okay, so that was my programming. And there was a lot of anger in my house. There was a lot of dysfunction in my house. So I had to work really hard to undo all that programming. And then besides that, there's there's past lives. There's past lives from our parents, which is all embedded in our DNA. So there's a lot of work and stuff to unravel here. But we have to look at our programming and say, okay, I keep doing this, okay? How can I change that? We got to write a new program. So what do we do? We cre we create a compelling future. Well, there's so much I want to talk to you about today. Um, first and foremost, you talk about, you know, being young, struggling with addiction, mm -hmm. and then you became a super successful entrepreneur. How did you make that switch? Can you walk us through that journey? Well, I just, you know, I, I look at my life and I can't believe how amazingly lucky I am. But I was um, 24 years old. I'm in a 12 step program and my life's a total. I have an eighth grade education. I have no money. I'm 40 grand in debt. I have negative net worth. I, the only credit I have is bad credit. And a friend in a 12 step program says, hey, you're you're a mess. And a guy in a 12 step program says you're a mess and you better listen. So, and he goes, I might know somebody to be able to help you. And I said, okay, I'll check it out. So I went and met with this guy. In my book, I call him the mystery man because when I wrote the book, I couldn't remember his name. And when I wrote my first book, Love Unfiltered 2014, and then when I wrote Creation Frequency, I really wanted to know who he was. So I did it. I actually hired a private investigator. Private investigator. His name is Douglas Fitzpatrick, mm -hmm. Fitzgerald, excuse me. And so I didn't know any of this at the time. I'm just a, a desperate young man. And he says, Mike, you come here seven weeks, one hour a week, and you'll get everything you want in your life. Well, and that's a pretty big promise, right? And mm -hmm. uh, I had very little faith, and it was $50 an hour, and I didn't have 50 cents. And I said, okay, so for some reason, I said yes. And so he started out, he said, we're going to create a balanced life. So he broke my life into six areas, relationships, career, finances, um, owning a house was one of my intentions, a contribution goal. He said it's very important to give back to others and stuff like that, right? So so the first six weeks, he said, the, the important thing he said, there's no difference between imagination or reality. And I'm sure everybody's heard of you can imagine it, you can create it, but it's true. And let me explain further. So we wrote these six powerful intentions as if they already exist. My number, he said, what's the number one thing you want in your life? Well, two years prior, I'd walked out on my wife and my two-month-old baby girl, mm. and I was divorced now two years later, and it was eating me up inside that I'd blown this thing, and then someone else was going to raise my daughter, and blah, 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 blah. And so we wrote this powerful intention and went like, Lisa and I are so happily married. Our daughter, Michelle, thrives in this marriage. So I'm writing this intention to uh, about this woman that hates my guts, right? And so at the end of six weeks, I now have six intentions. And week seven, he brings out a boom box. Now, you're a lot younger than me, but back in the day, that's how we listen to music, on this big thing called a boom box. And he had a cassette tape, and it was in, had theta brainwave music. So, you know, our brain goes in different frequencies, and, and theta is the best for manifestation. And so he says, I'm going to play the theta brainwave music. And then he handed me a tape recorder with a microphone, and he handed me a relaxation script. And he said, I'm, I'm going to play the music, and I want you to record this relaxation script, and then I want you to read your six intentions. Little did I know, by the theta brainwave music and the relaxation script, I was putting myself in a hypnotic trance, which mm. basically we're in from birth till age eight. That's why we absorb so much because we're in a hypnotic trance. And so and then I read my intentions. So he records it. He takes out the, the what was blank cassette tape now is now has all these intentions on, hands it to me. So I leave there seven weeks later, $350 poor with a cassette tape. And he says, the best time to listen is every morning right when you awake because you're coming from delta to theta and alpha and right before you go to sleep because now you're going from beta down to the alpha and the theta. So those are the best times of the day to get the brain to pierce the conscious mind into the subconscious mind. And why is that important? So right now, your subconscious mind, my subconscious mind, at the bare minimum is taking in over one million bits of information every second. 
a million bits of information. Some people say as many as 10 million bits of information. So it's taking in all this information and then it chooses 40 bits of information to deliver to our conscious mind because that's all the conscious mind can handle. And this doesn't judge. The subconscious doesn't judge. And it will give you whatever you focus on. So, for example, if you walk around all day long, go, oh, my life sucks. Never ever, nothing ever goes right. Your subconscious mind will go over those million bits of information and feed you 40 bits of information that support that belief system. Okay, so you're self-defeating yourself, right? So, so anyways, I start listening every morning, every night. One of the things was doing my own business. Within four months, I own my own restaurant. Mm-hmm. Two years later, my wife that hates my guts, my ex-wife hates my guts, calls me up and asks me, tells me she needs a date for a Christmas party. Would I take her? We get remarried. We have three more children. Um, all these things come true. You know, I wanted to make $10,000 a month. I've made million dollars a month. I mean, so uh, there's, a, there's a science behind this. It's not woo-woo. You know, the, someone wrote the book called Think and Grow Rich. And I think it really did a lot more harm than good. It's a great book. Don't get me wrong. I recommend it all the time. But it's more than just thinking and growing rich. We got to take some action. You know, we got to we got to get up off the couch. And the beautiful thing about the creation frequency and what he taught me is, see, for example, when you're focused, you, you, you where your energy flows, where your attention goes. Right. So now I have these six intentions that I'm listening to every morning, every night. My subconscious is looking for things. And guess what? It will also deliver you ideas and thoughts from in the field of infinite possibilities right so i get an idea on how to open this own restaurant and boom it happens so that was the biggest gift in my life and and it this works i want your listeners to really know that it takes some effort you have to really do a little bit of work but once you do the work then your then your your resources now become all everybody in the whole world because here's what's happening I'm reprogramming my subconscious mind by listening to these intentions. And by the way, I'm, I'm, what, am, what am I made of? 50 trillion, human, or 50 trillion living conscious cells. They hear everything I think and say. They feel everything I feel. They're my consciousness, right? But more importantly, the power of sound. You know, the Bible says that God spoke this world into existence. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And so when you take this sound frequency, which is the cassette recording, while I'm listening and reprogramming myself, that sound frequency, and Tesla said, if you want to understand the universe, you have to understand energy, vibration, and frequency. And that's all sound is. You know, right now, you think I'm speaking words. I'm not. I'm moving air molecules which are causing a vibrational frequency. They hit your eardrums and go into your mind and they become language in your mind. I'm just, I'm just causing a frequency here. So when I have these powerful intentions, that sound vibration energy, that frequency is going into this field of infinite possibilities. This is space, right? But it's filled with lots of energy, chi, prana. You know, I can take this phone and I could text you right now. You're in Virginia, I'm in Columbia. Yeah. And instantaneously, what's that traveling on? Okay. There's a field here of energy. Okay. And it's vibrating at a certain frequency. You're vibrating at a unique frequency. I'm vibrating at my own unique frequency. It's like we all have our own IP address. And you know what? Sometimes you meet someone and you immediately resonate with them. You know, and we used to say back in the day, you know, you vibe with them and you're on the same page. It's that's all it is. So everything is energy, vibration, frequency. So I create these powerful intentions and then I create this amazing life of wealth and health and vitality. And this works. This isn't woo woo. OK, science is now proving this. You know, it's in the Bible. This is as old as, you know, time. Right. This concept. But now science is proving it. And that's what's so exciting about it. Wow, Mike, that was... Sorry for the long answer, by the way. No, that was incredible. That was incredible. I mean, I was, you know, in a trance there for a second, just (laughs) listening to everything that you said. One, I do like that you're saying that this is not woo-woo. Part of the reason why I started this podcast was to bring conversations like this and demystify and take away that concept like this is woo-woo because the world we live in, only values data points and science prove it to me yeah. how do you know how do or how are you sure that works so yeah. i'm glad that we are having these conversations and reaching the larger consciousness because you know 
on paper, you know, you're a bus- you're a successful businessman and if nobody knew anything about you, they probably would be shocked that you're having these conversations, right? right? Because right. of the world that we live in. Um so I love that explanation and demystifying it and pulling from different sources to to make your point. I didn't think that makes sense. So everything that you're talking about right now really sounds a lot like learning how to hack the subconscious mind. Because yes. yes. Go ahead. We, I'm sorry. We, to no, no problem. Because we hear a lot about manifestation. I hear that word all the time. People have different ways of explaining manifestation. One thing that seems to be true across the board is that what you think you can manifest, right? But you're taking it a step further. You're yes. talking about sound and wave frequencies and, and all of that stuff. So what would you say are the three keys to manifestation if you could if you could break and, it down and let me say first because you you hit the nail on the head but there's one missing ingredient i want to add to that okay. because what we think does become our reality mm-hmm. there's not one thing in your physical reality and i'll challenge you and i'm not going to have you do it now but i would challenge you to think of one thing that is in your physical reality today that didn't start as a thought Mm-hmm. Okay, so everything starts as a thought. So that's powerful right there. But what makes it manifest faster? What makes it more true? And by the way, you know, when I create my intentions, like I'm creating a powerful intention right now to build an amazing retreat center here in Medellin, Colombia. But so that's my intention and I'm the creator, but I'm co-creating it with the creator of all that I call God. So it's always evolving. You know, so so you you want to be specific, but you want to be flexible. But the one thing I want to add to the the thought is when you link a powerful emotion to it. See, the thought is the electrical current that goes into the field, but the, the heart is the magnet that draws it to you. And so the, the the like my intention to create this beautiful retreat center, okay, is all because of love and service to those less fortunate. I want to give them an opportunity to come to a place and realize that they're a creator and not a victim. And I want to show them that they have the ability to heal themselves and that everything they need is already within them. So I've linked so much love to this to this intention of creating this. So the thought is the, I'm going to create this beautiful retreat center. And the emotion attached to it is this love for people to give them this opportunity to come here to this beautiful place and to heal. So, so I mean, you got to add an emotion. Um, so, when I go to create an intention, right? You got to go within. Everything is within. You know, it's interesting. We have these eyes that look out, but all that we also have a third eye too, which which is our inner eye and is connected to our Creator. And so, when we go within and we feel that. Um, we get the answers, okay? And then once we say, okay, I want to create intention, then I want to be as specific as possible, and I want to be practical. Like, for example, you know, I I think anything is possible, and in the field of infinite possibilities, in the quantum field, everything is possible. But let's say I want to play quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. I'm 65 years old, okay? So, So that's what I mean when you got to be practical and and realistic, because if I have... I I could create that intention. I could listen every morning and every night. It's not going to get through my conscious mind into my subconscious mind because my conscious mind is going to say, dude, you're 65 years old. You're old. You're slow. It ain't going to happen, okay? So, so, But out of that intention, what could happen is I become friends with the quarterback of the 49ers. I become the coach of the quarterback of the 49ers. I get in the bright. A million things could be could, could happen right there. But the other thing is connecting to a higher purpose. And what I find is that a lot of people aren't even clear on what their purpose is, you know. And so I really try to encourage people to go within. And what what keeps you up late at night excited? And what makes you jump out of bed in the morning and want to go out and create? That's your purpose, okay? And the, and the higher purpose, the highest ones being love and contribution and giving back and helping others. But That's good for a guy that's 65 years old that's already created success. But you're a young woman, so you need to still manifest a a career. You need to manifest money. You may want to manifest a family, whatever you want to manifest. So at different points in our life, when you were a baby, you wanted to manifest crawling. Then you want to manifest walking. Then you want to manifest talking. So it depends where you are in life. But when you... It's important to have a purpose, and it's important to understand how to fulfill that purpose. And that's what I teach. That makes a lot of sense when you said, you know, 
having that intention and then connecting it to an yes. emotion, connecting it to your heart. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I, I've heard so many things about manifestation. So what you described initially, going back to the sound waves and, and listening to that, um, was it music or, or, or so? Sound? Yeah. So it's, so it's, it's, yeah, it is music and it's, it's tuned to theta brainwave music. So, mm. so we have brain waves, right? And so right now you and I are in beta. Okay. We're, yes. we're talking, we're active, we're getting done. The, well, the one above that is gamma. Now, if you want to activate that one, you got to be careful because that's where you're connected. To, you become one with everything. Yeah. Okay. So, but for manifestation, and, and for creating alpha and then theta. So I like theta the best for, for manifestation and be able to get into my subconscious mind and work with that. So it's just, a, it's just brain, it's just music with that frequency, you know, and everything has a frequency. And keeping those intentions in mind, like the-, the No, I, you record down. them. So we have an app, we actually have, so we don't use a boom box anymore. We created an app, it's free. It's the icon is CF for creation frequency. Okay. And so now you can just download the app the music is already embedded in there. The script for the relaxation script is there and it's recorded, or I prefer that everybody record it in their own voice. And so it's all right there. And then you just write your intentions. Mine are usually about a paragraph, two at the most, and very concise, very tight, very specific. And then you record those. And the trick is to take the time, five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night, is to listen and 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 pay attention you know consciousness all consciousness is and very few of us are conscious uh, a lot of the time we're usually working on our subconscious mm -hmm. so that what does that mean that means that you get in your car you drive to work you don't even realize you're doing it it just yeah. it's automatic right and so we're only conscious five percent of the time but when we are conscious all that is is being aware so the more time of the day that we can be conscious and aware of everything going around us and everything going on inside of us, that's how we pick up these great frequencies of ideas and thoughts. That's how we manifest the right partner. That's how we manifest the right funding. That's how we manifest the by being aware and conscious and awake. If we're just going about our day unconscious, we miss everything, you know? So that's why it's really important to be conscious. So my question for you is how does someone clear the negative thoughts that tend to mm. overshadow our or cloud our subconscious mind because you know people talk about meditation and you know all of that stuff but something that i struggle with is you know whenever i try to quiet my mind um i i will say that i have the potential for psychic gifts and that's something that scares me a little bit so whenever i quiet my mind it feels like i'm in this dark hollow room that's not necessarily scary but i'm i'm still scared of it at the same time and what comes in that room is a lot of like negative thoughts and doubts so how do how does someone get rid of that in order to really focus on their intentions and, and call in what they're looking for practice 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 and realize that you're programmed you're programmed you know, from from birth to about age eight, you're in this state of brainwave state, which means you're a sponge. That's why you can learn to learn a language. Yeah. I'm trying to learn Spanish right now. OK, much easier to learn it when I'm six or seven. Yeah, I can I can learn it by just being around it when I'm six or seven because I absorb it yeah. right now. I have to work hard to learn it. Right. So we got to get rid of our negative programming. There's so many people in the world today that. They're, I, they're, they're a lawyer. I say, why are you a lawyer? Well, my parents wanted me to be a lawyer. Why are you a doctor? My parents wanted me to be a doctor, right? Or in my case, there was a lot of negative programming. You know, I'll never forget my dad. And when I, you know, I was like 13, he said, hey, you're going to end up in prison. Okay, so that was my programming. And there was a lot of anger in my house. There was a lot of dysfunction in my house. So I had to work really hard to undo all that programming. It's like peeling an onion, right? You can keep peeling and peeling and peeling. So you have to realize, first you have to look at that, say, okay, what was my childhood programming? You know, because we're programmed to think we had a great childhood until we start really going in depth and looking. I said, whoa, wait a minute, okay. And then besides that, there's, there's past lives, there's past lives from our parents, which is all embedded in our DNA. So there's a lot of work and stuff to unravel here. But we have to look at our programming and say, okay, I keep doing this, okay? How can I change that? We got to write a new program. So what do we do? We, cre we create a compelling future. That's what the mystery man was doing with me. Okay, I was stuck in the past. Oh God, I screwed this up. She left me. I'll never get her back. 
I don't have a job. I didn't go to school. So all this negative past. So basically what happens to most people, I wake up in the morning, I pick up my phone, I look at my Instagram, I look at my emails. I go, oh man, you know? And so I'm, I'm doing the same actions as I did before. And when I'm doing all that, I'm getting the same emotions. You know, the brain is a pharmacy. It's creating the same chemicals. So my body is addicted to those chemicals and wants to keep me anchored to the past. Well, guess what? If every day I think the same thoughts, I feel the same thing, and I do the same thing, can I really expect a different future? No, it's impossible. You know, someone called it insane. You know, keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. That's a definition of insanity, right? So what we have to do is create that compelling future. Now, everything happens in the present moment. So I can only, so when I'm in the present moment, I'm living in the present moment, I got two choices. And the, and the brain is just a, 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 me a memory of the past. Okay, so I got to move into my heart. I always tell people the hardest, longest journey you're ever going to take is 18 inches long. It's moving from what I call the insane asylum, the, the stuff you were talking about, the programming, all the BS, right? Which, which in fact, this is a supercomputer. If I use it properly, the problem is I'm letting the insane asylum run the show. But when I move from here to here, this is my truth. This is my essence. This is my soul. This is eternal consciousness, right? And this can never lie to me. This can never trick you. It can't. It doesn't have it in it. It's pure. But this thing here, I can manipulate. I can control. I can do a million terrible things, right? So when I live from here, now I got this supercomputer, and I start writing the new program from here, what I want, what I desire. What makes me feel good? Now I create this this intention, and I use this supercomputer to manifest it. So we, everybody, most people are living backwards. But when we live from our heart, and we learn to trust our heart, you know, many of us have a a, a a wounded heart. So so we do a lot of work around that. We have to clear up all that wound in this and heal this heart. And once it's healed, we can open it. And once we have this beautiful, loving, open heart, then we can say, okay. What fills my heart? Well, I want to create this wellness center. I want to help people. Okay, now I use this. Okay, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do that. And then it starts to flow. And then you're getting these downloads from I call God and say, okay, great idea. Boom. Bad idea. Okay, let's go this direction. So I'm flexible. I'm nimble, but, but I'm always here. And if it feels right, I do it. And if it doesn't feel right, I stay away from it. That was powerful. It's about moving from the head into yeah. the... the and, I, and I'll give you a very powerful example of this. My father grew up with two alcoholic parents. His father died when he was 11 and cirrhosis of the liver. His mother couldn't manage him. He became a ward of the state of California when he was 14. He had an aunt, thank God, a single aunt that raised him. But my father didn't have know what love was. My father lived in a state of fear. He lived up here in fear and did, couldn't touch this. He couldn't go here. And I always tell people, listen, you're going to make this journey, I promise you. But unfortunately, most people take it in their last breath. And it was just about a year ago this time where, you know, and I had a difficult relationship with my dad, but I, when my mother died in 07, I did everything I could to heal it. Cause now he was, he was dependent on my mother. He was the crutch. Now he needed another crutch. And I tried to fill that role as much as I could. But when he was on his deathbed and couldn't, I didn't even know, know if he was conscious or not. Right. Cause the eyes were barely open. He's laboring to breathe. He's close to death. He's like within hours of death. I went into his room just by myself and I sat next to him and I told him how much I loved him. I told him what a great person he was, what a great father he was, what a great man he was, how he's going to be with my mother shortly. And let me tell you, tears streaming down this man's cheeks, okay? He finally moved here and he finally opened it. And so when he took that last breath, he was free, okay? And that's, but why wait? Take, do, take this little journey right now. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts. You get hurt living here. I, I guarantee you, you're going to get a hurt a lot more. Here, you get angry, you get resentment, you want revenge. Okay, that's a whole nother. This energy kills you, destroys you, and makes your life miserable. This You're going to get hurt, but that's okay. You're going to survive that. And every time you get hurt, you're going to most people are going to get better. Some people get bitter. I'll give you that. Some people can't take this and they become bitter. And that's a shame. And guess what? They'll probably get to come back here and redo this again. Okay. But I say, Hey, feel it, feel it, feel it. You know, there's a, I think it was Descartes. He said, I think therefore I am. No, 
I say, I feel, therefore I am. And so that's super important. Yeah, that was, that's so powerful that you were able to kind of really help oh, your dad release such a blessing. himself. You have no idea. The blessing yeah, for me. Blessing. Yeah. I mean, I know it was yeah. a blessing for him, but gosh darn, what a blessing for me. Yeah, I'm sure you were able to let go. Even, oh, I'm sure you oh. were doing the work to forgive healing. your father, but the, healing, that's healing, tremendous healing. healing right there. So um, it's, yeah, that gave me goosebumps. Another mm -hmm. thing for me too is I realized that I'm able to manifest the things I'm looking for when I'm, my intention is there. I'm coming from my heart, but I'm not attached to there the outcome. Go. Yes. And I'm not attached to how it happens. Cause yeah. But here thing, the ego is going to be attached. The yes. heart's not. Yes. As soon as I release the attachment of this is how it's going to fall into place, it yeah. happens just like that. Because I know that when I have intentions, I start trying to calculate like, well, I need to do this in order for it to happen. I need to do that in order for it to happen. And it's, we live in such a magical world and we are magical beings and we have we don't even understand who we are exactly as right. as beings and yet manifestation is one of those things that really allows us to tap into um the non-physical aspects of who we are as human beings um something else that you talk about are the um i believe you say that they're the four life-changing truths about the universe. Could you talk about yeah. that a little bit, please? Number one, this will sound crazy to some people that haven't studied quantum physics, but matter is an illusion. Okay, mm -hmm. so what do I mean by that? So you're looking at Mike Murphy, the story of Mike Murphy, right? Which consists of skin and bones. And when you break that down, it's there's cells hold this together. And then you break down cells, there's there's chemicals, there's molecules, there's genes, and you keep going and you get the atoms, and then you get the particles, and it went, and then when you at the end of the day, it's all energy vibrating a certain frequency. But here's what's interesting about an atom. An atom is 99.9999% space. Okay. So I'm made up of atoms. Atoms are 90, that's a fact. Atoms are 99.99999% space. That's a fact. So the illusion is I'm solid. Okay, what's holding this together? What's holding this table together? Well, that's the electromagnetism that's holding it together. And I just came up with this the other day, and I, I got to research and play with it some more. Because I think what's holding this together, these atoms to create this thing called a body that houses my soul, my essence, my consciousness, my, you know, the real me, because I'm not my body and I'm not my thoughts. So if I'm not my body, am I not my thoughts? Who am I? I'm eternal, timeless consciousness. I'm a soul. And so, but here's the thing I came up with the other day. So what's, what's really holding this together, right? And I, I came up with a thought, intention. I intended to be born into this physical world. We come from singularity and we live in duality, okay? In singularity, there's just peace, love, joy, God. In duality, there's good and evil. There's black and white. There's polar opposites, right? But I think this is just a, there's no proof to this, folks. So, but, but in my mind, if intention is holding this together, and maybe intention is holding everything together, you know, you take an acorn, it turns... Maybe it's that, that acorn's intention to become an oak tree, right? It takes time. And so I think that, that it, somewhere in the great beyond in space, I intended to become this person here in this time and space in duality. And I think it's that intention that holds us together. Just a crazy idea. But I think that's one thing. So, so that matter is an illusion. Now, if you... That's crazy, I know, but if you study quantum physics, which is fairly new, um, it, it makes sense. The other thing is, anything is possible. In the field of infinite possibilities, when I can let go of the ego, the story of Mike Murphy, when I can let go of the body, when I can go into a deep meditation, and you, you mentioned you struggle with that, we might want to come back to that, but when I can go into a deep um, meditation and become no one, nowhere, and, and become nothing is where the real I'm connected to all. Okay. And that's, and that's another important ingredient is that we're all connected. You know, I'm sure you've had this experience that you're thinking about somebody and five minutes later, they call you. 
Okay, we're all connected, and the illusion is the separation, and and that's what drives me crazy about the world today. Is we fight over everything, Christian, Muslim, gay, straight, black, white, Democrat, Republican, and then we break it down to you know, I mean, it's just getting crazy, right? And we're all together. When you suffer, I suffer. Okay, so that that's why, and this is very very important. So we have our individual consciousness, right? And I can control that. I can control what I eat, what I drink, how I feel, what I think, right? But how come sometimes, and all that could be perfect, and then sometimes I I just feel sad or I just wake up and just don't feel it. It's the collective consciousness. It's this web of everybody connected to this. And when, when, when the world is suffering, we're going to suffer. And this was proven in uh, recently in 9-11. You know, they were able to measure the impact of the world, the emotional level of the world and the energy of the world, how that event affected everybody. Right. And so just think, just imagine, you know, because because, you know, the world is kind of getting goofy. I don't know if you've noticed, but, but I've noticed. And 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 so I used to get angry. I used to think, hey, let's fix this. Come on, let's let's do something. And I realized, no, we, it's too late for that, folks. I mean, they got all whoever they are. They got all the power, all the money, all the weapons, and we're just little us. How do we how do we shift this? If we were to unite in unity and we were all to close our eyes and go within and picture this beautiful world that we're where we're all united, we're all one big loving community where you help me, I help them, blah, 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 blah. All this evil would dissipate. It'd have to. There would be so much positive energy of love and joy and contribution that the evil could not exist. It wouldn't be able to breathe and it would just collapse. I think it's collapsing, actually. I think it's one of its last breaths right now. All this craziness, insanity, I feel like the energy is shifting. And I think this is a pattern that happens that maybe every 26,000 years, I don't know. I think it started to shift May 21st, 2012, the end of the Mayan calendar. And what I think is happening, I could there's no proof of this, but my personal belief is we're going from a masculine energy, which is domination, penetration, to a feminine energy, which is love and nurturing. And so I think the powers to be, the people in this that want to control the world and masculine energy, they know what's up. They know what's coming. And and so they're doing they're 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 fighting like heck to try to hold on to their power, and 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 they appear to maybe be winning at times in some areas. But I really think at the end of the day, God, love, humanity, goodness is going to win out. That's my hope and prayer. Yeah, that's my hope and prayer as well. You said so much there. Um, <laughs> just to, to start off with first with the, you know, we're moving into more of feminine energy that's nurturing and, and loving but one thing about the world is that you know everything has like a yin and yang and yeah. and masculine energy is still very important but we're we're trying to move into the more positive aspects of masculine energy um and also be being cognizant of not going into the negative aspects of feminine energy as well just kind of finding the healthy balance between both both energies um and something else that you mentioned when you talk about meditation and, and us, you know, what's holding us together and the intention of, of it all. When you were talking about meditating and getting into a space of not being attached to who you are in this earthly body, just feeling like you're nothing, just reminded me of, of something that I that I do is, you know, when people ask me, you know, who are you or how would you define yourself? Since I can remember, I've always struggled with that because I'm still learning and figuring out who I am, but I also understand that who I am is never going to be fully understood. So I always struggle with putting my a label on, on who I am. I feel like I'm, I'm everything and nothing at the same time not in a negative way or in a self-absorbed way but it's i always used to struggle with you know attaching myself to something even as basic as oh what do you do for work i i know what i do for work but that's just not who i am i struggle with labels right. and like you said people get so stuck in the labels and it, it causes a lot of friction and it's you versus them but we are really all connected and when my my family hurts i hurt when strangers hurt i hurt 
and I don't when think an, separated. When, anim, when animals hurt, you hurt. Yes, when That's animals connect, hurt, Yes. You know, we're connected to the trees, everything. I mean, it's everything. all one. Energy is energy. And, and guess what? Energy can't be created, nor can it be destroyed. So Absolutely. we, and we are energy. That's who we are. And and I would ask you, um, who are you without your story? You know, yeah. who are you? Your timeless consciousness, eternal. And yeah. that's who you really are. You're not your body because that's made up of 50. Well, we've been talking millions of our cells have died and millions more have been born. Yeah. And we're not our thoughts because where do they even come from? You know, so if we're not our body are not our thoughts, then who are we? We are energy. We are soul. We are timeless. But and and, and we, you touched on this earlier. There's two worlds here. There's the seen world, and there's unseen world. Okay, yeah. and they both have laws. If I drop this pin, it's called gravity. It's going to keep falling. Okay. In the unseen world, there's plenty of laws, and so and the law of attraction is one of them. We just got to explain it in the way where people don't think it's woo woo. We use because there's science now that supports this, you know, and so that's and and we know science has already proven that thoughts are energy vibrating a certain frequency, and science has proven there is a field here, okay, a field of infinite possibilities, and so when my thought to manifest this beautiful retreat center that I'm building, for example, goes into the field and it meets other thoughts of the same frequency, eventually either that person comes into my life or I come into that person or somehow there's a connection made because we're vibrating at the same frequency. And this is so powerful to understand that that what you vibrate at, so a lot of people want what? Money or love, okay? Yeah. Most people, right? <laughs> or lose weight, right? So so, so let's say I want money. Well, I just, my whole life, I've been pretty good at manifesting money because I, I look at money as currency. I find that interesting, frequency and currency, right? And so I always just pretend I'm rich, okay? And guess what? I, I attract money, you know? Now, you have to be careful and you have to be responsible and you have to be a good steward of this money and you have to have plans to generate more if you need it. But we, sometimes we're we're chasing money. The ego's chasing money. We don't even know what we want it, why we want it. So I think, you know, there's a lot of, you know, stuff on the internet today and on Facebook, you know, money, 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 money. Well, you know, that doesn't really turn me on. What, what I'd like to manifest is more integrity, more honesty, more love, more compassion, you know, I think by when we manifest these things, the money's just um, the money's just going to show up, okay? Because it's it's in becoming, it's in becoming a new person with a compelling future that I overcome the 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 old person and I leave that behind. And that's a lot of a lot of magical things can happen with that belief system, especially around healing, because what's more important than health, you know? So yeah. so a lot of people will use meditation to create that healthy body. Okay, and you create it in your mind, and then your mind starts making chemicals for a healthy body and starts giving this to you. And that old sick person kind of gets left behind, and we step into a new healthy person. Now, is that easy? No. Does that take work? Yes. Is meditation easy? No. And and and, and when we first start out, are we lousy at it? Yes. Okay. I mean, we all got a monkey mind jumping all over the place, especially in today's crazy world. Okay. So we got it. This is a practice. Now, the beautiful thing about today's world, we don't have to go to India and find an ashram. Okay. All we got to do is go to YouTube and man, there is meditation coming out of your ears, all types. And, and, so, and so you find what resonates with you, but you have to, you have to work at this. You have to research what's the types of different meditation, you have to find a teacher. I find for me, guided meditations work the best. If I just sit here and try to sit here, it's not going to go very well. Okay. So I find guided meditations that I love, or I'll find meditations that will link, you know, we have a left brain, right brain, right? And they're completely different animals. Okay. With completely different missions. But when we can get them working together, we become 10 times more powerful. So there's meditations where you just listen to sound frequencies vibrate, but what it's doing is linking these two sides of the brain together. And then you bring heart coherence, you attach love and, and gratitude to it. Gratitude being probably the most powerful in this state. So if I got a grateful heart, and my left and my right brain are firing together at a certain frequency, at the same vibrational frequency. You create like this triangle of this gratitude with this. Miracles begin to happen, I promise. But it, but it, it's not easy and it takes time. 
Yes, and it takes a lot of practice, like you and said. And a lot of practice. So I've probably given most of my really powerful wisdom. And, and, and I, once again, I want to commend you for doing this. I know how difficult what you're doing is. I know how hard it is. And I applaud you and I thank you because all this stuff helps the entire world. So thank you for that. Um, there's 7 billion people in the world right now. So many are suffering. But if 3.5 billion of us would all find someone less fortunate and just give them a little lifting hand up, boom, this whole place would change dramatically, mm. you know? And, and that's something we can all do. So do something for someone else. And if you can do it anonymously, you're gonna break your ego. And when you break your ego, you're gonna move into your heart. And when you live from your heart, then you can use a supercomputer to really create something beautiful for yourself and for your family and your community. Amen. Thank you so much, Mike. This was a wonderful conversation again. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for all of your wisdom and good luck Pleasure. on your, your venture.